and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. I'm Stephen Cabral, board certified naturopathic doctor. And today on our Training Thursday show, I want to stick with the theme this week. I really want to talk to you about what your exercise, what your training, what your program should look like for this new year, at least the first 12 weeks or so of your new year. And I want to do that by kind of simplifying the equation. I've been doing this pretty much my entire life, looking at how do I take these big, complex issues, being complex for myself too when I was first starting out, and really simplify it. Meaning like, what are the things that really matter? So for example, if someone comes to me with IBS or Crohn's colitis, any type of SIBO, any type of digestive or intestinal based issue, what I have to do is I have to look at this. What's the 20% of things? What's the small amount of things that I can do for this person immediately that's going to get them results within that first 21 days or so? What can I do? So I look at that and it's just, it's a handful of things that I need to do. And then I can get more results as we go along after I see how they're reacting to my initial protocol. So that's why it works well. So one, we know it works. Two, we see how do they react as a person, as an individual, so that I can further customize the program for them. But also, I want to take this and I want to then extrapolate that same information and bring it across the board. So whether you're looking to get well, whether you're looking to lose weight, or just you want a good rejuvenation anti-aging based protocol. So we look at those specific things. And that's what I want to talk about today. When you're looking at exercise... Whether it is for weight loss, whether it is just for body transformation, meaning like you want more toned muscles, right? Or you just want to look better, meaning more shapely. And really, I see nothing wrong with that because I honestly believe that the human body was meant to be in great shape. And that's because your the, your body, if nothing else, it has to hold up for decades. Meaning like if your body's not holding up, I meet with so many people in my practice, they're only in their 50s and their body's already broken down. And I look at them and I say, sure, like we can keep you alive. Modern medicine and all those things is great at keeping you alive longer, but you're going to be decrepit in your 60s, 70s, and 80s. Like, is that the life that you want? The last, your prime years, right? Your golden years, your body's all broken down. That's what I look at now. So when I see, you know, when I look at Jazzercise from 40 years ago, I say that is the Zumba of today, right? We kind of go back, we make fun of things like Jazzercise, and I no doubt in 10, 20 years, we're going to be making fun of Zumba too. But there's nothing wrong with Zumba. It's getting people to move. It's getting them to have fun. It's getting them to exercise. But when you talk about results, that's not the best way to get someone results. Now, if it's the only thing that will get them moving, fine. But what do we need to do? So I did a previous podcast on this and I kind of called it the big rocks theory, right? So with the big rocks theory, I said this. I said, if you really want results, you need to look at the trivial few, just the few things that really matter. And when you look at that, what you're going to start to understand is that there are a few number of exercises that work incredibly well. We have to do that, of course, right? And we have to just pick those out first. So by picking them out, what we need to do is this. We need to say, why are, first, why are there a set number of exercises that work better than all the others? And the reason why they work better than any of the others, and that they've really, they've stood the test of time, which means they've been around for 100 plus years when real exercise, real exercise physiology has been looked at over this past century, and also that people have been doing them then throughout the millennia. And those movements are natural human movements. Movement. So, meaning like the exercise that you're going to do in a gym or at your own home with your own body weight, if you choose to, are the same ones that mimic natural movement, that exercises the movements that you'd be doing in typical daily life. And then we know that. Once we know that, we say, okay, well, now we simply have to work the body to a further degree, right? We have to make it harder on the body than where it's currently doing right now because if we make it harder in the body, if we do things to the body, if we make the body do things in order to get stronger, it has to change physiologically, right? So what does that mean? Well, if your body has to change physiologically, that means your muscles are going to look differently. Your body's going to look differently. It's going to look stronger, more shapely, more toned because it now your body thinks it has to do more manual labor, more work, right? So it's gearing up for that. And that's really what 
transforming your body is all about. It's applying this thing, the big rocks theory, which I'm going to talk about, and the specific adaptation to impose demands. It's called the said principle. It's really what you have to live by if you're looking to get better results. Specific adaptation to impose demands is simple. All it means is this. If you're doing a squat with your body weight this week, and you're adding, let's just say you do 10 reps this week, and next week you do 15, the next week you do 20, the next week you do 25, well, eventually, you don't want to do 100 squats. You should not do that. I know boot camps do that. But what you want to do, you want to stay somewhere between, just for your average person, 8 to 15 squats, we'll say, right? So now, that's become too easy. So we have to add more weight. And as we add more weight, then our body starts to feel around the 10 mark, the 12 or the 15 repetition mark. So then we keep going up in weight, right? That's how we're going to get better results. That's when your glutes start to literally transform. They become round again. They become more shapely. Your thighs, your hamstrings, your quads, your IT bands, everything starts to get more toned or it starts to look more toned. It's also because you're boosting your metabolism at the same time, burning away, stripping away that body fat. So today, what I want you to do is I want you to choose the exercises that really, they speak to you, that you enjoy. And that means like, okay, if you want to do a boot camp, fine. Just make sure you're not taking to failure every single time, that you may be doing it every other day instead of every day. If you want to do your favorite spin class, I talked about that last week, fine, but we need to add back in some of these mechanical exercises, some of these manual labor-based exercises. I want to go through those today because there aren't many. So this is how you know if you're doing a correct program. Honestly, you can purchase any book in the world. You can purchase any online personal training program in the world. I don't even offer one anymore. So I have nothing to sell to you, to be honest. What I'm looking for you to do is this. Okay. For your lower body exercises, there has to be a squat in there, some type of squat, front squat, back squat, but there has to be a squat because you can say all the time in the world, I can't do squats because I have bad knees, but I, I can say to you, I simply don't believe you. Most people have, they just squat them properly, meaning that if you sit down in a chair, when you sit down in a chair, do your knees hurt? Yes or no? If you say yes, well, then there probably is some biomechanical issue. The knees are out of alignment. And I'm not going to get deep into that today. We'll save that for another show. But for most people, they can sit down on the toilet. They can sit down in a chair just fine. They can stand up just fine. Maybe not strongly, right? They don't have a good strength in their legs, but that can be improved. So what I'm saying is usually people's form is off. And all you need to do for those squats is literally sit down onto a chair, sit down onto a bench, onto steps, keep your core engaged, stand back up. That's how you first learn to squat. You can also search on YouTube. I have a great video. It's called how to squat or learn to squat, something like that. It's like 30 seconds. You actually stand right up against the wall and you learn to sit back with your hips. You don't bend your knees first. That's why people's knees hurt when they squat. They get the sharing force through the joint of the knee because they're squatting and they're bending the knee forward. All right, I don't want to spend too long on squats. I'll try to link up that video if I can. If not, you can absolutely find it on YouTube from some of my old school videos working with diet.com as their fitness guy. Okay, so we have your squats, but we also need deadlifts. And I'm not talking about, well, yes, Olympic deadlifts are great. It looks like a squat because you're squatting down, but you're holding the weights low. Romanian deadlift is the one where you're working your hamstrings. You're sitting back, you're stretching back. It's a great thing. Like, So most of us, pick up our kids this way or they pick up grandkids this way. You just kind of, it's like a quarter squat, right? You sit back with your hips, you stretch your hamstrings, stretch your glutes, works a little bit of that lower back, you keep your core engaged, then pick up the weight. So it's a Romanian deadlift. We also have a lunge. And again, people's knees typically hurt when they lunge because they're doing the same thing as a squat. Those knees are coming forward. All the weight's on the ball of the foot. You have to sit back on those heels. But you can start with a backwards lunge. That will absolutely help. You can do a split lunge, which is just basically up and down that teaches you. So there's so many great processes of learning how to lunge. And the last one for the legs is a step up, right? Most people know what a step up is. You just put up whatever step size that you want. You step up, you step down, you step up, you step down. There's a million different variations of that. So for the lower body, we have a squat. We have a Romanian deadlift. We have a lunge and we have a step up. Those are your four primary movements. How do you know if your exercise is good or your program is good or not? You look to see, are those included in my workout? Not in the same workout, but in a week's worth, are those exercises included? Yes or no? Then you know if you have a good workout. If it's the adductor machine or if it's a leg extension machine or if it's a leg curl machine, those are like icing the cake. They aren't the cake. They're not your foundation. And I also don't recommend them because they're extraneous. They're unneeded. They're not necessary. In maybe 1% of cases, you can make an argument for that and that's fine. But we're not talking 1%. We're talking big rocks. We're talking what are the main movements. All right, so let's go over your upper body movements now. You need a chest press, which is like a push-up or it is a cable standing chest press, any one of those. That works absolutely fantastic. Many different variations. Then you need 
a shoulder press. So you have a vertical press, which is over your head. That's your shoulder press. And again, if you have any shoulder-based issues, you might want to wait on this one, right? Because you need to get those shoulders into alignment. You need to stretch your chest, stretch the SEM muscles in your neck. You need to open up your chest. You need to strengthen your back muscles. So next up, we have our row. That's when you're rowing. That's the opposite motion of a push-up right? So you just do your rows. And then we have a pull up or chin up or one of those variations and you can do this assisted and that's the opposite variation of a shoulder press. So very simple, right? When you first start out as a personal trainer, you learn all of these exercises and it's very complicated, right? But then after you've been in this industry, you've been studying for a while, you say, you know what? There's really only so much I can do with the human body. I can push and I can pull and then I can rotate. Like there's not a lot else that you can do. So that's the amazing part. You have a chest press, you have a shoulder press. So those are your pressing movements. And then your pulling movements are your rows and then your chin-ups and your pull-ups. So those are great. You can do them with TRX, however you want. Those are fantastic. That's what keeps your body balanced. So those are your, again, like this is super simple, right? And then all the other, like chops are great for your rotation. You can do anti-rotation. You can do planks. You can do any of those things for your core. But everything else is gravy after you get your squats, your Romanian deadlifts, your lunges, your step-ups. For your upper body, you have some type of chest exercise. You have some type of shoulder exercise, the presses, right? And then you have your rows for your back and your rhomboids, and you have your pull-ups, and you have your chin-ups, and those are all fantastic as well. That is the foundation. You throw in some planking, you throw in a boat, you throw in some chops. That is your full, complete program. Is it going to be the sexiest program in the entire world? Probably not, but all of the experts, all of the people at the top of that totem pole understand that if you want great results, keep it simple. You know, you can make it fun, but keep it simple. There's no standing with one leg on top of a BOSU holding an Airx pad in one hand and clapping it against the dumbbell on the other, right? That's absolutely ridiculous. We did that. I was a part of that, right? I was a part of that in the late 90s. We're all about that, you know, functional movement. And then if we could balance that BOSU on top of a stability ball too, then we were at the top of the totem pole. Now we know like, okay, all those things are great. There's still a place for them. Like I, I still use a BOSU. I've no, no issues with any of those things, but you have to understand in the grand scheme of things, when you're looking to get someone results, and I'm talking to you as I'm talking to a client, I need to give you the basic human movements and I need to make sure that each and every week that I'm improving your progress. And then once we start to plateau, we do an unloading week, which just means a lighter week so that we give your body a chance to rest and then we start ramping back up again each and every week. So hopefully that makes sense. That is exactly how we train people at Stephen Cabral Studio in Boston and the Cabral Wellness Institute in Boston. This is what we do. We've been doing it forever, like forever, forever. And it gets results. It really does. There is no better way of getting... I'm in the business of getting people results. That's what I do. And I want to do that in the fastest and safest way possible. And this literally is it. And it is it because it's never changed. It's always been this way for the past hundred years. It will never change because human physiology, our bodies only move in certain specified directions. And this is exactly what you need to do to load up those big muscles, which are going to boost your metabolism, transform your body, no matter what your results, this is it. And then you're going to carve out that body through excellent, excellent nutrition. So hopefully this makes sense. Of course, I love answering the exercise. I love answering the body transformation questions as well. So feel free to submit those at stephencabral.com forward slash askcabral. And every weekend, tune in because that's when we answer all of your questions. So thank you again. I really do appreciate each and every one of your listens. And as always, if this show could help anyone else, feel free to pass it along. Take care. Thank you for just tuning into the Cabral Concept. By now, I'm sure you probably heard how important it is to get enough vitamin D all year round to prevent serious health issues like bone loss, depression, weight gain, fatigue, energy metabolism, and even cancer. In my private practice in Boston, I make sure that every person I work with has their vitamin D levels monitored during the winter or at least supplements with 1,000 and 2,000 IUs of vitamin D3 per day. That's why this month, as a valued listener, I would like to offer you a complimentary bottle of vitamin D3 with any order you place on the stephencabral.com online store. It's my gift to you and my way of trying to help you stay healthy and strong all winter long. To get your free two to three month supply bottle of vitamin D3 while supplies last, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash store. There you'll find all of my top at-home functional medicine lab tests, nutritional supplements, and everyday products I recommend in my Boston practice. The first 100 orders in January will receive a complimentary bottle of vitamin D free of charge. Thank you again for listening to The Cabral Concept. 